Well, in the episode on our daughter learning Chinese, uh, Lillian talked a lot about the benefits of learning a second language in general, whether it be working the memory muscles of the brain <clears throat> or in, um, instilling critical thinking skills through the adoption of grammatical abilities, uh, or lastly, via the adoption of cultural values through the learning of a language um, through the literature of that language. So she gave the example of Latin. When you learn Latin, you learn it through the greats like Cicero or uh, Livy or Caesar. And in those books that you learn, that you read in order to learn Latin are the cultural payload of, of Rome, the, the adoption of virtues, of bravery, of courage, daring, sacrifice, etc. This quick episode is about what's the cultural payload of learning Spanish. Our daughter is now taking both Chinese and Spanish lessons, one hour a week. She goes for one hour and whatever she's taught in that one hour, Lillian and I then reinforce in the time in between for the next lesson. Dibujemos una niña. Sí. Y yo voy a dibujar una niña también. Un círculo. Los ojos, la nariz y la boca. Is that the hair? Yeah. El pelo. ¿Y la niña está feliz o está triste? ¿Feliz o triste? ¿Está feliz? Eh, sí. ¿Está feliz? Cabello. Cabello. Muy bien. La boca. Muy bien. Unlike in English, Spanish has a sweetness to it in that there are a lot of modifications to words that constitute uh, diminutives or um, the making of little things mm -hmm. out of big things. So my, my name is Felipe, but as a child my name was Felipito. So you add the ito to the end of things to make them sweet because they're so little um, and cute. And it's these itos and itas and little, you know, modifications to words. Um, that's just one example, but that make the Spanish language um, a sweet language, a, fa a language of, of family closeness, a language that um, nurtures and, and, and builds close relationships. Now, I don't know. You know, there, there are other examples and maybe, and I'm not saying that other languages can't bring that to bear, but I think the, the way in which Spanish is used um, in daily life, I'm not talking about literature, but just in daily life, it brings to bear a level of sweetness and it builds a level of closeness between family members. And I want our daughter to carry that on. ¿Cómo se llama este color? Rosada. Muy bien. Vamos a dibujar un triángulo para hacer una casa. ¿Sí? El triángulo es una línea, otra línea 
Y otra línea. Ventana. Ventana. A window. Una ventana. Se llama negro. Negro. Muy bien. ¿Cómo se llama? El triángulo. El triángulo. 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 Círculo. Círculo. Muy bien. Cuadrado. ¿Cómo se llama la vocal azul? A. A. ¿Cómo se llama la vocal verde? E. E. ¿Y la vocal negra? Y. e. Muy bien. Negro. Este es el color negro. Con el color negro vamos a dibujar el número 5. I, I haven't added the Ita to her name. Um, and I could. And I think maybe I will now that I've written, I've, I've taped this episode and thought about it a little bit more. But the, um, come here. The benefit of the itos and the itas, um, I, I still feel them when I, when I see my family, um, when I have family reunions and such, and the, uh, Felipitos come out and the, uh, Davisitos and all that, it, it just warms the heart. And um, I have found that growing up in, in the United States and seeing a little bit now of England, that there isn't that same level of familial joy and closeness. Um, growing up, you know, it would be very, uh, very wrong of me to choose to spend time to consistently, let's say, prioritize friends over family in, in, in spending time after school. So if I came home from school and I said, you know, pretty consistently I, I would go out and hang out with friends instead of stay home or go out with family, that would be not good. That would be considered very bad. And uh, in that way, family was placed, um, there's a high premium placed on family, family first, your brothers, your sisters, your cousins, your uncles, your aunts, your grandparents, all that was in the inner circle, if you will. And friends were in the outer circle. And, you know, I, I suppose you can carry that paradigm out in any language, really. And maybe I just have romantic associations of Spanish to that paradigm. But I can't help but think that the, just the one example I gave you, the itos and the itas, and there are others that constitute a reinforcement of familial closeness that I want my, my kids to have. I'm still the ito in the family, so my parents and my uncles and my grandparents still refer me to that. And, you know, it, it also implements hierarchy. I'm still uh, lower in the hierarchy than they are. And, um, these are all good features, and I hope, uh, I hope the language, as she learns it, is able to transmit them to her and to my son. So, if I'd like to hear any comments you have on whether you're an English speaker, or a Spanish speaker, or a French speaker, German speaker, Filipino speaker, any speaker of any language, but um, what aspects of the language, your native language, do you appreciate and um, would like to be associated with your language in posterity? What would you like your native language to be known for, to pass on in its, in its cultural payload? Okay. Uh -huh.